Okay, moving on to our next task number two with our QS model called short pipe. So here we have to configure our four to propagate the EXP value down to the exposed label as the top label is removed. And we can only use one set of class map policy map for each direction. And then we need to know the new EXP values and the packet labels received by R2. Okay, and then we have to verify the R2 continues to Q packet using the original DSCP value. Okay, so our configuration is going to be performed on R4. So basically, right now the packet that's leaving R3 has the EXP of 3 and 5. Okay, and we saw in the previous task that as the top label was removed, we are left behind with the exp value of 5 as the 3 doesn't get copied down so now we're going to have to reconfigure our 4 to copy down the exp value as the packet is removed so what we expect to see on the packet leaving our 4 arriving at our 2 is with the exp of 3 and the way to do that is we need to get our 4 to remember the exp value of the top label before that label gets removed and kind of store it temporarily and then and based on that information that memory you kind of reset the exp value on the packet and for the route to have that ability to temporarily save the values, that's going to be through the mean of QoS groups. So what we're going to do is we're going to split our configuration into two separate sets of policy maps. So the first sets of policy map is going to be based on mapping the incoming experimental values to our QoS group. So let's say that if the incoming packet has the experimental value of 7, we can just map that to a QoS group of 7. Okay, but QS group can be pretty much anything as long as you stay consistent. It's just a, basically a value that provides a one-to-one -one mapping that you can later on reference for, out, for your output policy map. So next you can do for your uh, experimental value of 6, map it to 6, so on and so forth, until you all the way down to uh, 0. Okay, so which is your default. And now for your outbound QS groups, you do pretty much the same thing. So if the QS group of 7... We're going to map that to the EXP of 7. Same thing with 6. That's 6. Again, the QS group is just provide you a temporary storage of the input label. And one way of configuring this to come up with a series of class maps that match the incoming experimental values to the QS groups and then vice versa on the outbound direction. But that's going to require you to create right here, as, you can, as far as you can see, eight separate maps per policy groups. The better way of doing that, in fact, our task right here mandates that we can only use one set of class map and policy map for each direction. That's for inbound and or input and output. A more elegant way, I guess, of doing the mapping like this is to use the table map if your router supports it. So instead of having an individual class map, you can pretty much build a table map that maps Pretty much any kinds of QoS marking, whether it's cost, DSCP, IP precedence, experimental bit, obviously, to one another. For us, it's going to be between the EXP to QoS groups, and then QoS groups to the EXP. Okay, so that's what we're going to do first, is to build a table map. And that's going to be done on uh, 4. So command is table map. I'm going to call it, this one is going to be exp to qos so that's what we're going to call it. And then starting the command with map, and then from, and we, here we're just going to specify value, and the available range is between 0 to 99. So we do 7 to 7, enter. And then we're going to do 6 to 6, 5 to 5, 4 to 4, 3 to 3, 2 to 2, and 1 to 1. And then we can just set the default at the bottom to be 0. So if it doesn't match any one of these lines right here, we're just going to set to 0. Okay, next we built a class map. I'm going to call it, make sure it's match any. And then we're just going to call it, this is going to match all the possible value of experimental. And we're going to match by MPLS, experimental, topmost. And here we can just specify the whole range. So you can start 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, and then putting that in a policy map from, let's call from MPLS, class is all EXP. 
And then for the set, we want to set our QS groups. So this command right here kind of put the means meanings on these values. So the two is what you want to set it to. In this case, we want to set it to QS group from MPLS experimental topmost and here's where you tie the table to it so exp to qos okay so the way it reads is what values or what fields you want to set in this case is qos groups and from what field and this is the experimental or mpls exp value okay and on r4 it's going to be in this direction so it will be 0, 0, 001 colon 0 service policy input from MPLS. Okay, so that's just one direction, which is input. Now we have to map the QS groups back to the experimental value. So we're going to come up with a similar table map. So let me see what we have for our table. Since the content is going to be pretty much the same, then we can just basically come up with a new table map. I mean, in fact, you can just use the same table map, but Let's keep things separate since the uh, to and from value has different uh, meaning here. So this one's going to be QS2 EXP. Since the content's the same, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that. And then for the class map, make sure we match any. In this case, we're matching all of the QS groups. So match QS groups, start with 0, 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, and then putting that into a policy map to MPLS, matching our class, all QoS. And then this time we want to set the outgoing MPLS label. So set, it will be MPLS experimental. Topmost, so topmost in this case is gonna be the newly exposed label. Because the top label, the original top level would have been removed at this point by the PHP function. And then we want to map it from the QoS group using the table call QoS2EXP. Okay, and that's going to go on to our serial 0, 0, colon 0, out to MPLS. Okay, so at this point we have completed our policy map right here and here. And now to test, let me restart Wireshark. And on R6, let's do a ping. Source 6601, 184. Okay, stop. So let's see, again, packet leaving R1 is marked with exp5 and 5 on both labels as the packet arrives on r3 we still have 5 and 5 and as it leaves r3 to r4 we have exper experimental of 3 on the top label and now as it arrives on r2 so go over and look at r2 you see that now we have the experimental value of 3 as compared to what we had previously was 5 and because we kind of have configured R4 to copy that down to the next available label. Now we have that set to three. Okay, and then the packet leaving R2 to the LAN towards R7 still have the DSCP value of EF, so that never changed. Okay, the only thing that's changed is the experimental value gets copied down from the top label to the bottom label as it leaves R4 arriving at R2. So now if you look at the policy map, that we had configured on R2. And it's, since the original EF, our DSCP EF is still on the packet, we're still matching our class map EF as the packet leaves R2 to R7. Okay, so let me clear that counter one more time. And that's pretty much the behavior of the short pipe model, which is the experimental value is maintained throughout the its lifetime in the MPLS network. So basically the consistent QoS can be enforced throughout the network. But once it hits the egress PE router, the queuing of the packet is based on the original DSCP value. Okay, and that should complete our task number two.